Hello, Mrs. Hilt here to go through the problems from the Work and Power Worksheet. So please have yours in front of you so you can check your answers too. All right, I'm not going to read the questions, so please pause the video if you'd like to read them to get caught up. Uh, the first one was pretty straightforward. You're given a force, you're given a displacement. You multiply those together, you get 8,000 or 8 million joules. And just for practice, we're going to convert 8 million joules into kilojoules. Because you guys will definitely be converting between kilojoules and joules because it's with the metric system. And I want to get the little practice with that. So going from joules into kilojoules is the same as going from meters into kilometers. So we'll move our decimal place over three spots to the left. We get 8,000 kilojoules. All right, and if we wanted to go in the reverse order, go from kilojoules into joules, just three spots to the right, and fill zeros into each of those spots. Okay, so now two and three, I think are better described or explained with pictures. Okay, so again, if you want to read the question to get caught up, pause the video. Diving into the explanation and also my beautiful picture. I definitely think it looks like he is pulling up uh, some lumber or potentially hot dogs. I'm not sure. But this one was tricky because you were given two different forces and you need to figure out which one is causing the movement or which one is in the same direction as the displacement. So because he pulls the rope two meters down, that means that the force that he is pulling it down is going to be in the same direction. So calculating work here, we'll take 400 newtons and times it by two meters to get 800 joules of work. On to number three. Okay, again, pause the video if you want to read the question to get caught up. So this one, again, it gave you extra information that you didn't need. But we do need that one. I'm going to actually start talking about, with, or start talking about free body diagrams because that was really important for understanding this. So recall that uh, free body diagrams, if they're motionless, they have a net force of zero. But if they're moving at a constant velocity, they also have a net force of zero, okay? Because there's nothing causing an acceleration, deceleration, anything like that. So all of the forces are completely balanced. Since the problem told us uh, this guy was moving at, or the boy was moving at a constant speed, that tells us that the net force on the boy is going to be zero. Now my arrows might not be perfectly sized up, but uh, they should all be equal in length. I was able to figure out the force of him going down based on what they gave me. Uh, then the, nor uh, the normal force in the other direction had to have been the same as the two 10 newtons because he's not floating in the air or falling through the ground. Uh, therefore, the friction, or sorry, the force that we need to calculate uh, work is going to be the same as the friction force. Because if he's, again, moving at a constant velocity, net force of zero, the forces must be the same. So to calculate work here, we will have our 35 newtons times 200 meters we get 7,000 joules okay then on to the back of the worksheet or if you're looking at a pdf it's not really a back page two and I color-coded the diagram with which step they are you should be looking at at that time. And I wrote all of the answers in, and we're going to go through the calculations. Of course, I'm going to color-code it. 
So step one, a 50 Newton girl climbs the flight of stairs in three seconds. So to find out the amount of work that she did, we need to know, of course, that she was 50 Newtons. And we need to know uh, the distance, or her, sorry, her displacement, which is three meters. That's how we get 150. And how do we get 50 watts for the power? Well, if we have 150 joules of work, and she, they said that she did it in three seconds, 150 divided by three is 50 watts. All right, on to step two, and blue. Work is 30 joules uh, for the girl who is, she's now lifting a painting to a height of 0.5 in 0.75 seconds. Okay, so we need to know her uh, force to be able to calculate work. It was given to us up here, 60 Newtons. Okay, we have 60 Newtons times her displacement of 0.5 meters, and we get 30 joules. And work, or sorry, power, uh, 40 watts was found by taking the work, 30 joules, and dividing it by 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, last one in the set. Uh, girl climbs the ladder with the painting in five seconds. Okay, so we are only given the displacement here of her lift, uh, or the height of the ladder. We aren't given a force directly, but we do have the force. So the girl is now climbing the ladder and she's holding the painting. Therefore, we have the force of the girl <clears throat> plus the force of the painting. That is going to be the total force to calculate work here. So 60 Newtons plus 50 Newtons. Sorry, oops, I didn't do the N. And multiply that by the distance that she lifted the painting, which was two meters. That's how we get the 220 joules. And last but not least, 44 watts. That was found by taking the 220 joules and dividing it by the time that it took her. Okay, and the last two problems to end it for us is the challenge problems. Again, pause the video if you want to read the question. These ones were, again, straightforward with the first one at least, that we have the force multiplied by the displacement. The numbers are just, they just look a little different because they're in scientific notation, but don't let scientific notation numbers scare you. It's just a different way of representing a number so it's smaller. It's kind of like taking uh, your name, instead of writing out your first, middle, and last name, you write out your initials. That's like a number in scientific notation. Uh, B had a little bit more to it uh, because you were given five minutes, so you had to convert minutes into seconds to be able to end with watts. Okay, thank you for watching.